Hello everyone, this is the Caddy Bass. It's Katie and Steven. We're going to do something a little different today. We are actually changing the oil in my car. Doesn't sound... 2014 does... Toyota Corolla. Yeah, so it's a little bit different because unfortunately mine requires a special kind of wrench that we're going to be using to change the oil in. Seems pretty simple, but it's a task that not everyone knows how to do. So we It figured... is simple. And uh, her car is unique because the oil filter actually requires a special wrench to get it off uh, the way it's uh, up inside the car which I'll show you uh, it's actually on the bottom side of the car it's you, impossible to really get your hand up in there to unscrew it my old truck I used to have I used to be able to unscrew the oil filter by hand uh, it, it really wasn't anything special uh, so we'll get to it and show you uh, first thing you'll want to do is uh, get the proper oil the proper amount the proper oil filter because every time you change the oil you want to change the oil filter if you go to discount auto advanced auto O'Reilly just tell them to make uh, Model and year of your vehicle and they'll get they'll be able to look it up in their system and get you the proper oil and oil filter and be sure that when you're changing your oil if you've been driving you need to let the car sit for a little bit it needs to be on a flat surface our driveway is not so flat it goes downhill a little bit so the car is in the garage right now doesn't have to be absolutely completely flat because you're either going to use a jack stand pardon the mess guys a jack stand like that i used to use that for my truck i got a brand new truck so i'm just taking it to the dealership now for them to do it for first couple of uh, oil changes since i get them free uh but for her car I use these ramps. You can pick these ramps up at Walmart or uh, Advanced Auto. I find it just easiest. You just drive up on the ramp. Uh, so I use it for her car. Unfortunately for my truck, I wasn't able to use them because it sat higher and I couldn't actually get it up all the way on the ramp without hitting the roof, uh, the garage door. Uh, so we're going to go under the hood here real quick. I'm going to show you. You're going to look around. You, If you don't know anything about vehicles already, this is your dipstick here. You'll pull this out. You can check your oil on a normal basis with that. Most, oil, most vehicles also have the oil, what it takes, written on the oil cap. This takes 0W20. I went to uh, Advance Auto and I picked up uh, high mileage Pennzoil Synthetic. Uh, a lot of times uh, advanced has uh, deals going on for the oil filter and oil I got it while I well she was at work so I had to ask them about what oil it took so I'm gonna get underneath the vehicle and show you what you're looking for to drain it I'm gonna... right, so some of the things you're gonna need when you go to start this project and changing your oil obviously you're gonna need oil and as I said you want to change your oil filter so you need to buy an oil filter all right if you don't already have one, which if you're look, watching this video, you may or may not, uh, you're going to need an oil pan to catch the oil as you drain out. Uh, I used to have one that had the full top, which actually I have one over here. I used to use this one. Sorry, pardon the mess. Uh, but I noticed that as I would drain the oil out, it would actually hit up here and splatter out all over the driveway or wherever I was changing the oil so today I went and bought one of these that has no top to it so I'm hoping that it'll catch the oil better without splattering it out um, your preference you can use gloves or whatever uh, to protect your hands from getting oily I sometimes do it. I usually do it just because I'm touching multiple things and when I go to get out from underneath the vehicle I like to just take those off so that I'm not getting oil all over the ground while I'm trying to get out from underneath the car um, you're going to need some wrenches. You're going to need the wrench. And if your vehicle takes a special kind of wrench, this is the wrench for the oil filter we were talking about earlier. You'll need that. Just your standard socket wrench. A lot of times they take, I, they vary on the sizes. I, I think hers takes a 10 millimeter. I'm not sure. I'll find out once I go up underneath there, but I got a nice set that I can bring up underneath with me to find that out. Uh, 
Other than that, you really shouldn't, other than the, the ranch that I showed you earlier, or a jack, you really don't need anything else for this. Alright, so if you come over here, I'll show you one or two more things. Alright, this is the dipstick. This is how you normally check your oil, see if it's at the right uh, uh, level. Uh, when you check that, you're going to want to check it on level ground and uh, cool. You want to check your engine cool because the oil needs to be at the, the level that needs to be at cool. Uh, otherwise, it may not have enough once it heats up. Um, you're going to look for your cap for your oil. A lot of times the caps will say what uh, rating oil they take. Uh, cars are, uh, Every vehicle is a little different. Hers takes OW20, uh, so I picked that up. What I like to do when I change the oil is I like to take the cap off and then get up underneath there and actually unscrew the, the drain plug. Uh, it seems to me like it helps it drain faster because um, then the air is not trying to rush into that one hole. You got this that the air is coming down and pushing it out. Uh, it, this can take you literally probably 20 minutes to do. I like usually like to let it sit for an hour and drain all that nasty oil out. Uh, the more of the bat, the old oil you can get out, the better. Uh, so let's get down underneath. All right, guys, so we're up underneath the car now. And this is your oil can, uh, holder or your oil pan in your car, all right? What you're looking at here to drain it is just a socket. It's a plug, the oil plug. All right, so I brought the sockets that I had underneath and uh, they weren't big enough, so I grabbed a, a 9 16 and that fits it. You want to just test it like that, alright? So that fits, alright? So we take the socket wrench, attach that, get the oil pan lined up with your oil pan on your car, and you're just going to take that out. Now, it's still, if you've been driving it, if you're not doing this first thing in the morning and you're driving it a little bit, I gotta actually get off this thing. The problem is I take push, pull. And for the record, I was driving it this morning, delivering, so it's been around a little bit this morning. So, the oil still might be a little warm. Alright, so, it's just something to be mindful of. Don't freak out when it's a little warm. So... And it's just as simple as that. You take the bolt out, the plug out, and it's just gonna sit here and drain like this. Now, I usually set the bolt there and I get a paper towel usually to wipe that up. It's something I've always had instilled in me is clean up the stuff before you put it back. Like I'll clean, I'll wipe my tools off, I'll wipe that off before I actually put it uh, back onto the car even though later down the road it's gonna get oil on it again. I still like to wipe it off and just keep things clean. Now the oil filter is actually right here and it's actually got grooves that match up with that oil filter wrench cap like so. I actually have to get up underneath there because there's certain grooves that fit which actually I think I just had it. I just got it to fit. All right so I'm actually gonna wait on that until this dripping here stops the most because I actually need to move the pan a little bit so that I can get a good angle on the oil filter. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this drain for probably 30 minutes here. Uh, 20 to 30 minutes here and then we will take the oil filter out and uh, that's going to need to drain too because what happens is the oil comes through and it helps pick up a lot of that particles, uh, the dirt and all that that gets all over the motor in any metal shavings or anything that might be roofed. Although, if you've got metal shavings, you need to go see a mechanic immediately. And we'll be um, back soon after the oil's done. All right, so we've let the car drain uh, its oil for 20 minutes now. We had a timer set, so we let it sit for 20 minutes. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back under and we're gonna remove the oil filter. And then once we do that, we're gonna let it drain a little bit by now, most of the oil should be out, uh, so we'll see how much still comes out when we remove the oil filter. Uh, but let's go back under and check.
Alright, so I took the oil filter wrench, I've positioned it in the right position. You'll notice if it takes a certain wrench, oil wrench, that filter the wrench, that you'll, as you rotate it, it'll just sit better. It'll actually encompass more of the, the oil filter. So, once I got that, I've got my wrench on here now. So it's delusion. trying to be cautious because there's a sharp piece of the frame right next to it and you don't want to do that I'm having a little difficulty here guys so bear with me like I said there's a sharp piece of the metal frame here of the car and I have smashed my knuckles up against before and it hurts I might actually have to get up the other way to get a better angle on it On the proper way first. Oh, there it is. The good news is, people, that this was tightened, so I didn't have to worry about it being loose. The uh, downside is, well, I'm sure you can see that. Oh, I had issues with it last time that I went to go change the oil on this car too. The problem is it gets hot down here so the metal constantly is expanding and contracting as it heats and cools. So, <sighs> Alright guys, so I had a little issues trying to get this off due to the last time that I put it on there. Put it on there, I think I put it on a little too tight. So what I had to do is I had to go to my torque wrench. And I, that just gave me the extra leverage I needed to actually break it free. So I managed to break it free. So, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get this light set up so that it points directly at it. Alright, so here's the oil filter spot. So, I took the wrench. I got it loosened. Still not... All the way undone, but I got it loosened. And it sits on there snug and it's designed to because you don't want the oil leaking out from there. But really, it shouldn't be on as snug as I had. Usually, if you can put your oil filter on by hand, uh, that's usually the best option is just hand tight. You don't want it on any tighter because, like I said earlier in the video, Due to it getting warm, it heats and contracts, or expands and contracts, and it'll just get tighter over time. Alright, and you'll notice, this is why Toyota has this special wrench. Hang on a minute. Is, I'll show you with the clean one, actually, guys. I'm just going to drop this out right there. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back up top here. Alright guys, so the reason Toyota has their oil filter, they come with the special wrenches, this is what it was sitting in. They they particularly go with uh, these sliding ones. Uh, you can buy different kinds, different vehicles have different kinds. There's some that are a full canister and the whole filter itself is just, this will come off and the filter is built into this and then you, re, you just replace this whole thing. Toyota went with one of these, so basically what you do is you just slide that in there like that, and then we go back up under and we just plug that back in and screw it in. Um, if the, you'll notice they come with an O-ring here. What you want to do is you want to check that O-ring, see if it's uh, damaged at all. This one still looks in pretty good condition. If the O-ring's damaged, that's what you can replace with that. I'm not actually going to worry about it, seeing how the O-ring is actually in really good condition still. Um, I'll probably change it out next time we go to change her oil, but we'll go back down under. I'll plug this back in, and uh, then I'll show you what to do afterwards. All right, guys. So I showed you how to drain the oil uh, from your vehicle and uh, all the steps to take to prepare for it. Now Katie's going to show you how to fill up the oil um, in your vehicle. 
And this is a real simple process. Uh, I recommend uh, getting a funnel so that it's not spilling down inside the vehicle. And sorry for the mess. It, it's a little humid out here. We got storms all day, so it's very humid and it's warm out in the garage. So. And, all right. So we like to use um, a filter that's pretty easy, pretty small, that's going to do the job. It makes it a lot easier and a lot less mess to clean up um, when you're pouring oil. So we're And gonna... notice the long spout on it. That helps to provide it higher off of the up off of the engine here so that you don't have to tilt the, uh, the that big oil jug as far uh, to get it to start pouring pouring now this actually might be a two-person job since it's so large the funnel for a temporary anyway because the nice thing is it's got a nice hand on the side yeah once you start pouring It'll get lighter and easier to do. You want to just go slowly with it. You don't want to pour too fast um, because sometimes it will overflow on the uh, funnel. So it's okay if you start out with it pouring a little fast because that's going to happen as you just saw with mine. It's just like any other bottle that you would start pouring um, right away. It wants yeah. to just. And you can right go a little there. faster than what she's pouring right now. Um, you just got to kind of be mindful of your funnel. So if you see it starting to fill up and it's starting to back up into the funnel, just stop pouring for a minute, let it go down, then start pouring again. And part of the reason that I'm pouring a little slow, people, I'm short. I'm 5'2". I'm having to reach a little bit up to, uh, to reach this. So just be mindful of that. All right, guys, so what I wanted to go over, Katie's still pouring the oil in. I wanted to go over with you a little bit of a cleanup. All right, you can buy when you're at uh, Advanced Auto and all that. You can buy special oil absorbent uh, powders or pads. Um, there's a couple ways you can do it to prevent a mess. You, one, you can throw a tarp down, but then you still get oil splatter on the tarp. And unless you're willing to throw a tarp away every time, you still got to clean the oil up. What I use is cheap and simple. I bought a dollar, uh, a, a dollar bag of kitty litter from Walmart. And I found out kitty litter works great to absorb uh, oil. It, it, it's the same thing as absorbent. You figure the cats, when they urinate into the, the, the kitty litter, it absorbs the, the urine. So the oil, the kitty litter is cheap and effective to absorb oil. Also, it provides an abrasive um, if you do get it onto your concrete to be able to scrub up the oil a little bit. All right, guys. So she finished pouring the oil into the, the car. Now your next step is you're going to want to turn the vehicle on and let it sit and let it cycle the oil through and get it back onto the valves and cylinders and all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the vehicle and uh, you're just going to let it sit there for a little bit. Uh, initially, when you start up, you'll hear clicking. That's, that's the sound that you'll hear if your oil is really low. Right now, it's going to make that sound because you drained the oil, but it'll go away within a minute or two um, of that. It, but it's nothing to worry about when you're after you've changed your oil. All right. All right, guys, one other thing I wanted to mention before we start this car up is uh, when I change the oil, a lot of times I like to do a little other preventative maintenance and cleanup. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't think about it this time um, when I went to go grab the stuff for her oil change. A lot of times I like to clean up the battery and the battery terminals. Um, you can get these little uh, fabric like washer things that go on there to protect the terminal from corrosion. And the other thing you can get, sorry, is some of this battery terminal protector that you spray on it after you clean it up. Um, to really get the corrosion and everything off, I buy one of these. I bought one of these scrubbers. 
use that for the terminal on the battery itself and then you scrub the connectors for the car with this um, like I said I didn't buy the proper stuff to do the terminals this time um, but I'll set up a video of what to do with that uh, next time once I get by the stuff all right guys so that's how you change oil in your car and clean it up um, we're the caddy bass you know hit like subscribe leave us comments um, and by all means check out our other videos like I said, clean up your tools afterwards. They'll last longer for you. All right. Till next time. Have a nice day.